Welcome to our Rollmaster actual play session. Twilight of the Old Order is a campaign set in the world of Duranaki, the continent of men. In this gritty, cutthroat world, politics, religion, and commerce are all intertwined and reign supreme. Characters need to be both smart and ruthless to survive. We hope you enjoy our story and, as always, may the dice roll in your favour. This is episode 106 of Twilight of the Old Order. The Twilight Party have arrived in the free city of Jebai Ritana and are planning their next move. Our story resumes on the cusp of a pivotal meeting for the group. They're about to have an audience with influential figures who could potentially provide critical assistance, but it all hinges on the impression our adventurers leave. Hello, I'm Chris, otherwise known as GM Chance, and welcome to our story. And this story is Twilight of the Old Order. These are our six heroes. These are our characters that will be in play tonight. And in a second, I'm going to uh, hand over to those, uh, to the players of those characters to introduce the characters uh, that they are play character or characters they're playing and um, answer a character development question. Super fast, very quick shout outs. Uh, my usual shout out to our supporters, our followers, um, the people online who are enjoying a bunch of people based in New Zealand uh, indulging in their tabletop role-playing addiction. Um, it's fantastic uh, with some of the comments and the, and the things that are coming through um, that, that we see online. Some really warm, generous things that people are saying. Um, people are clearly enjoying our story, which is fantastic. What I'd say to any any viewers, uh, if you're watching this either for the first time or maybe you've seen a couple of episodes and you're going, oh yeah, these guys are okay. Um, if you're finding you get something out of it, you're enjoying the story, uh, you like the way um, our, our players roleplay their characters or how they phrase things or the way they think tactically or whatever, really encourage you uh, to click either a like down below uh, or even better, a subscribe. Um, every bit of support really helps the channel. Thanks very much. All right, we are away and I'd like to call on Aiden. Aiden has uh, has recently rejoined us after some time overseas and we are delighted to have Aiden back with us tonight. Aiden, take it away, please. Hello, uh, delighted to be here as well. Um, I play the character called Grey, who is a very handsome, uh, a elf who is usually half clothed but is now fully clothed uh, and is looking very dapper and fancy. Uh, he's a beast master, so he specializes in kind of controlling beasts, uh, getting them under his will. Uh, but he also has some other very interesting and useful little bits of magic up his sleeve. Uh, and when he's not doing magic, he's also very de uh, quite good with his. Uh, his big axe which he likes to swing around and also many other tools which he currently has <laughs> probably a little bit too much um uh the question to answer is how does he deal with the conflict within the group uh he doesn't really like to chat so much he's he's still he's getting he's quite good now with communication he's learned a bit more of the languages um, but he still kind of likes just to listen, uh, and he also likes to use dice uh, to help 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 make his decisions. He's, he's a bit of a gambling guy, and uh, I think it just kind of it's just a bit easier for him. Mm -hmm. Leaves it up to chance a little bit. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, 
who would you like to so uh, a small innovation while you're away uh, generally we ask to hand over to someone else who would you like to throw over to who would you like to hear from I always love hearing from Jada Jada take it away Stara Oh, there I am. That's me in the picture. Very tall, covered up, very quiet. Um, I'm an Arab woman, very religious, and I'm good, I'm good at fighting with a quarter staff. I am the team's lay healer, which is wonderful. Everyone protects me. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, hand it over to Pete. Oh, your question? Oh, I'm going to do... Um, how would you handle it if or when a party member's past came back to haunt the group? So personally, I would be quite accepting because I'm always quite um, mindful that there's something in my past that I don't know about. And I don't know if it's good, bad. I don't know who my parents were, whether they were criminals. So I think if a party member said something had come back to haunt them, I would be very accepting and just sort of try and focus on the... Um, our quest to stop the end of the world. Excellent. Fantastic. And not so much. Yeah. Cool. Oh, and you're going to hear from Pete. Yes, yes. Excellent. Pete, take it away. Thank you. Kia ora. I'm Pete, and I'll be playing Nicholas tonight. <clears throat> Nicholas is a common man. He is a quiet and unassuming sort of fellow, quite um, academic and studious. Um, he's a mentat, which means he uses uh, mentalism spells. Um, um, the question I'm going to answer is which party member has the hardest path in your opinion? I suppose we're talking about past and things. Um, in his opinion um, it's grey because he uh, was growing up in the circus and his parents got murdered and then went and lived in the wilds with wolves and <laughs> then found a beast master who also got murdered mm. and, then has, and then has had you know has been rejoining society after being raised by wolves, mm -hmm. um, and must have had a lot of confusion, a lot of difficulty adjusting to, you know, the weird things that happen in society. So in Nicholas's opinion, he thinks that's a difficult thing to adjust to, but I think Gray's nature is just to be a positive and, you know, an outgoing guy. I mean, he's, yeah, I just, he's, Nicholas admires his, his mental resilience, basically, and his, his attitude, his positivity attitude, he doesn't let his past get him down too much. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Admirable. Uh, let's hear from Anthony, please. Right. Oh, notes. Uh, yeah, kia ora all. I'm playing Eskelion or Eskel. Um, just one character tonight, which is a bonus. Uh, Eskel, the full half elf warrior mage, he comes from the port city of Shabibi, and accordingly, his favourite one is his ornate cutlass. Um, he's not a strong believer in the faith, so we, he has been feeling quite challenged in um, uh, Jebo Ratana at the moment, but uh, every day he spends there, he gets a bit easier getting to the groove. Um, and while his connections have definitely paid dividends for the part of recovering the ingots, it has come at a fiery cost for some. <laughs> Excellent. His, um, his question... A sheet. Um, how would how would Askel approach conflicts within the party? Um, Askel is reasonably uh, diplomatic. Um, yeah, um, you probably just work through it um, to, to, just to come up with a, some sort of a, a, a um, agreeance there. Um, but, you know, depends on how strongly you found, uh, felt about a topic, really. So yeah, so reasonably dip diplomatic, I think is. Okay. How he is. Yeah. Unless you're sometimes people from his past. I quite like the fire I saw in Askel last session, actually. That was cool. Um, he was just but a worm. <laughs> just but a worm. There is only one person left to hear from. Graham, take it away, please. Hello. Uh, play a couple of characters in this game, first of whom is Severin. Severin Kydegaard. He is a man from the north. Blonde head, blue eyed, bulky fellow, exceptionally strong uh, off the scale in terms of his strength. Um, he is from a fairly simple background, son of a blacksmith, uh, but uh, son also of a um, 
a traveler, a, a, sword, a mercenary, a sword for hire, uh, his mother, who has done very well for herself for the intervening years. Um, and from her, he, from a very early age, started to use the sword, and that's become an obsession of his life to master the art of the sword, and, and that is something he's followed in his short life. Um, he is a charming fellow, um, for the most part, and um, he has a particular interest in, in, in the party, I think, uh, in terms of he's, you know, interested in the whole group and the dynamic and them working as a team. That's kind of, I guess he, he had some training as a soldier. That's very much part of his DNA of, of, of how to, to work more effectively together and use all our skills together for a greater, uh, greater good. Um, so in terms of conflicts, um, probably... I, look, he's pretty. He is, you know, he's, he's he's easy to like. I think generally, um, he would talk and negotiate uh, for the most part. Uh, and occasionally, he can have. He do, has, does have. You know, he does have strong opinions, and he can get a bit righteous. Um, and he kind of tries to check himself a bit there, but um, and and he can get fixed ideas about things, and he's aware of that. But for the most part, he'll try and talk it out. Second character is Tenya. Tenya Anastasia. She is from uh, a wealthy background. She is the daughter of a very successful merchant. Uh, she is uh, an elf. Uh, she, her family fell upon hard times and she was forced to leave her home city and with debtors chasing her. And re sort of reinvented herself, really. Um, she had through family connections had, had, had survival skills that she was taught, very much going against her position in society, and but she fell back on them in quite a big way. And since then has been adventuring and trying to get some cash behind her so that she can try and work on uh, returning her, uh, repairing her family's name and getting them back to some level of where they were before. She's a long way off that and she's become somewhat distracted with this new task of saving the world. Um, in terms of conflict of interest within the party, how does she approach them? She just sulks. Really. <laughs> um, she's, she's not happy at all. She, I mean, if she's not happy with something that's going on and she's ha unhappy with someone, well, at least you know about it, right? So uh, that's the best you would say. But yes, that's that's them. Thank you very much. Uh, just a, a quick qualifier. Uh, diplomat was Ed's back. Sorry, diplomat. Yes. yes. Yep. Very good. Well met, all. Fantastic. That is the team. These are the characters that shall uh, delight us this evening with their escapades and. Their Could I ask, please, for a, a, a very qu super quick uh, summation of last session, please? A uh, couple of couple of words. I'd like to go first. Um, I can, yeah. Thank you. Thank you um, sure. We are in the city of Yubai Ratana. We are here because we, our previous contact, Ningwen, had said that uh, Jasir Al Hafiz would perhaps be a source of information and funding to help us on our quest to save the world. Um, we, last session, were halfway through our audience with her. Um, well, that's where the session started, so we'd managed to get in to meet her. She was quite a stern and quite unusual woman. Um, seemed to be sort of doing testing us and perhaps casting magic to figure out who we were if we were lying, that sort of thing. Um, she told us that the person that we were hoping to be f to follow, um, Torvash Papillus from the Tikos party, uh, one of the factions, had come back to the city of the Free City of Landania and um, from Tarek Neff, is where, what we were, which is where we assumed we were going to need to follow him to, so luckily we don't need to go there, but it, he was overheard saying that he had a new lead on the research he was doing um, in a region in the west of the continent um, near Ras Garrett in a region called Kinsal, um, in, a, in a ruined, uh, Lords of Akana ruin. Um, he was going to continue to search, we assume, for Devil Dust, which is part of his faction's plot, a way of taking over the world, basically, and ending the old order. 
So that was the information she gave us about that sort of quest. So we're figuring that's our next place to go, perhaps. Another thing she mentioned was that day zero is in four months' time, which is when the factions of the TCOS party will be enacting their um, plans. So we don't have a lot of time. Um, she also um, said that whilst her hands were a bit tied to help us fund parties or help us with resources to, to try to intercept him, she had arranged a meeting with some, sounds like, very influential, powerful and dangerous people. So they're going to come and meet with us in, at eight bells in two nights' time on the 24th of Moon. So actually that's when we start the game, that's tomorrow. Um, and that we need to be charming and quick on our feet to try and impress them or to get on their good side and hopefully they'll help facilitate us pursuing him. Um, the rest of that session, we went back to our inn. There was some sort of a scuffle in the street as we are going back to our accommodation. That was fine. When we reached our accommodation, um, we noticed that Askell had sort of split from the party and had a conversation with a, a, a person um, in the common room. And so Tanya sort of stayed to try and ascertain what that looked like. It looked like a fight um, of some description, not physical, but a verbal fight. And um, Tanya managed to talk with Askell. Um, and did you want to just explain from here, Anthony? Maybe. Nope. Um, seemed that um, that the person was from uh, from Askell's mistress, Dina, uh, Dina, and that he and Askell um, owed her a task, basically, and that um, Askell was Askell and Tanya had discussed that it was we didn't want to jeopardise our current mission, and Askell was definitely receptive to that, but Tanya was suspicious, and so perhaps Graham, you could <laughs> could relate what happened after that. Yeah, Tanya was a little concerned. I mean, Tanya's, you know, understanding what he felt he needed to do and wasn't going to judge him too much on that, but um, she was a bit concerned that it could upend where they were and so thought that she might keep an, an, uh, might be wise to keep an, keep an eye and maybe act as backup if he needed it because uh, we've had a few examples where Askell's got into trouble when he's wandered off. <laughs> When, uh, in the past, and she's a bit, a bit worried about that. So she thought, um, she thought, yeah, she went. She uh, convinced Nicholas to turn her invisible, and she thought that he would be going out that night, but he didn't seem to. So, at least as far as she was concerned, so she stayed up. He didn't come out, so she took herself off to bed. However, perfect, he got out. perfect, beautifully summarised, fantastically. And there we go, that's exactly where we're going to start the game, unless anybody has any qualifying questions. Start the game. So, you wake. It is... day of cold moons or the festival of cold moons a day of ill omens um negative connotations and generally not a good day in the calendar of this world uh deeds are um uh, business deals are never never done during this day um generally people consider it a, a, a somber and quiet festival thinking about those that have departed and often are full of rituals to ward away it's basically just reflect on the fact that sometimes bad things happen to good people and just hope they don't happen to you it's not a good day except for the elves the elves actually see it slightly differently uh so tanya you perhaps might have a, a slightly different springing your step today um your your people tend to see this more as rejuvenation, so a, a chance of kind of rebirth. But, but for most most people, um, it's it's a pretty sinister, uh, not a good day. Basically, not a good day to do much. And you you wake to uh, quite a beautiful day. Um, the sun's streaming down. It's hot and sticky, of course, as I've, as I've described a few times. 
Uh, and you're in your, you know, you're very luxurious. You can see on screen, you're very now very familiar. You've been here for nearly two weeks or so. Very familiar, um, a beautiful accommodation. And uh, you, what's what's weird is you've been here for quite some time, and you look out over over this uh, city, and you can see it there. You know, it's a it's a big city. It's not 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 the, the largest in this world, but it's certainly pretty big. Um, bustling, it's got an active port, but. Other than the call from the Ulea, the, uh, the place of worship for the old Tumar faith, it's quiet. It's a large city, many thousands of people strong. Here in the background, and all the point aren't here in the background. The occasional hubbub of voices, occasional tweet of birds, prayer, city. It's quiet. Very. You wake, you go about your ablutions, uh, you now slip into a reasonably familiar um, uh, um, ritual to your day. You know, you, you're, today is the 23rd, you've been here since the 11th, so you've got a sense of how this place works. Um, there are people that quietly come in and, and provide breakfast for you in luxurious sitting areas, um, but there is a, definitely a somber, a very somber mood. And their treads, uh, you know, are, are, are quiet. The voices are not raised. People speak in whispers. Um, you assemble uh, the next morning around breakfast. Uh, what do you say? Do well, uh, ten year old put sorry. put a bunting up and uh, <laughs> start dancing a few jigs. Hang on, I think I've. I might have that for you. Uh, no, really, great. Uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, just no, she won't. She's not that. No, she here we go. She'll, you know. No, I think. Uh, no, she's not much fun. She's not. She's not for dancing. Okay. Um, what do you guys want to do? Are we going to just keep it keep a low profile today? Play some checkers. I think so. Yeah, maybe some, some darts. Darts? Well, I would, yeah. I would have thought that's just not a good game for you to play with Graham. Esco is keen for a coffee. Yep. Bit of axe throwing. A little bit weary there, Esco. Okay. okay. He's not as much sleep as he thought. Uh, so we've got a plan, I think, for tomorrow, however. Um, was it was everybody happy with that plan? I suppose we could chat about that plan. Was did, did that plan? Did everyone think that was a good plan? Yes, but the group. Yep. All right. Solid plan. Solid plan. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Nicholas doesn't have the the ear cuffs on his character sheet. I thought that was. I think we're just going to. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're just going with one. Yep. But, but he he would have attuned them, so he's yeah he's he's able to use them for an hour. So if he was to go shopping with for herbs, he's happy to. Cool. All right. Any uh, any actions today? I should know about anybody doing anything. Well, I think most of what we want to do involves banking or shopping. Okay. All right. Well, um, you rack relax 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 relax. Um, Recline for the rest of the day, talk in hushed tones, particularly the humans. Uh, yeah, it's a day of kind of quiet contemplation. Over to you, perhaps, whether or not your characters might light a candle or uh, or think about those that they've lost. Um, Silius or uh, um, Itty Baby or, or various others in the party or perhaps others, who knows. Um, but you spend some time in, in, in quiet contemplation for the remainder of the day. You go to bed and you wake the next morning and um delighted to say considering you've been here for a wee while now and the weather hasn't earlier if you remember it rained constantly the next day uh the day after cold moons the 24th of moons in fact is a beautiful day it is crystal clear there's a gentle breeze 
And suddenly, suddenly, the city is back to life. And normality has resumed. Um, quite, quite comforting, actually, after, after the eeriness of Festival of Cold Moons the day before. Um, but yes, you can hear the hubbub of, of the market outside, and Jebai Ritana is, is definitely back in business. Uh, talk me through what you'd like to do this morning, please. Well, I think we'd be up at first dawn, to be honest. We'll be up early because we've got a lot to do. Okay. Uh, but just to read it back, uh, anyone jump in if they disagree or think of something different. But we wanted, I think, to take a partner off Severin and Jada because just... Jada can speak the local tongue and Severin has a modicum of trading yep. that he may apply. Um, to, um, they go to one of the metal merchants that we have heard about. Yep. Tanya partners with Askel, again, a native speaker with someone who has a modicum of trading, mm -hmm. uh, to go off and look at the prices at another. Okay. And then Nicholas and Gray, meanwhile, um, take the earbuds, head off and buy the herbs and spices mm -hmm. that we've isolated, yep. and the spells, and buy them with the money that they already have. And then we then they can go to the bank, collect the gold, bronze, and copper, and perhaps actually we um, the other group meets them there, and then we go and cash in the ingots of the winning metal merchants who will give us the best price. Head back and uh, buy oh buy the PowerPoint multiplier hmm. for Jada, the times three, and head back for tea and muffins. Excellent, great plan. Uh, does anybody so fantastic I've got that and the good news is thanks to your good work in advance uh, I've got um, I've got details of prices and things like that so great 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 plan so um, any advance or any changes to any of that I should be aware of on once I'm uh, just just saying perhaps I think that we make a definite plan with a time of bells to meet at the bank okay yeah done all right <clears throat> Cool. All right. So we, really, we're after two more um, prices for metals. So yeah, funny enough, I have them right here. Uh, technically, I, I only rolled them for just Tanya. So the fact that someone else is going to go, uh, I, I'll let it slide. It was actually the, the same the same person that rolled. So Graham, it was you that rolled for both your characters. So let's assume that one of them was uh, was with severance and and your trading is about the same actually it's not actually trading skill it's it's one off your off, off your other skills so it's about the same as tanya so i'm going to say i'm going to say they're both um they're both about the same so you've had two prices so far here is the third price i'm going to pop it into into chat uh this one here is the bronze emporium just uh so we're not you know so i know we're not wanting to, to focus on shopping too much but also just a bit of color about the city you're in the Bronze Emporium is a small multi-story building made of stone and wood. The building has a set of bronze doors at the entrance. The interior is dimly lit with torches. The main room is cluttered. Various bronze trinkets, statues in the walls are adorned with tapestries depicting ancient battles. Um, the purveyor of the, uh, oh, 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 sorry, the the um, the owner, certainly the the person behind the counter of the Bronze Emporium is Jakob Al-Hakim. And he spent some time, uh, Severin and Jadar, kind of looking over your wares, looking at the four different ingots you've got, and finally after, you know, a lot of backwards and forwards and discussion as kind of, uh, as discussed, he comes up with this price. He said, look, uh, like some of the others you've spoken to, He's never seen the mithril thing. He doesn't know what metal it is. He's a busy man. He's actually not a busy man. He's sitting there on his backside drinking tea and talking to you. But he says he's a busy man. And he can't be bothered wasting his time with objects that he really doesn't know much about. He looks over the gold and, you know, he kind of runs his finger down it and picks it up and says, that's a bit dirty, isn't it? He says, look, honestly... I'm pretty much oversupplied with gold at the moment. Thank you, but no thanks. Thank you anyway. He does kind of begrudgingly offer you that price uh, for the bronze. 
uh, 12 gold, 2 silver and 5, five bronze for, for the bronze ingot. And also that, uh, that price there for silver, you'll see the rest for the copper ingot. Um, he doesn't appear to be a particularly dynamic individual and yeah, that's pretty much the best you get out of, well it is the best you get out of him. The second group, uh, Tanya and, uh, and Askel, you head to uh, Al Safra's Precious Alloys. So Al Safra's Precious Alloys is, is actually quite close to uh, the, the the main bazaar where you're staying. Um, Al Safra's Precious Alloys stand as a proud two-story sandstone structure. Lush blue and gold tapestries drape the entrance and the scent of burning incense uh, fills the air. They seem to specialize in trading in, uh, in, in a variety of metals. Um, and yeah, uh, the, the gentlemen, uh, the, the main staff are Raid and Zaid, um, but the main person is Jamil. Uh, Jamil is uh, a tall, elegant woman with a silvery streak in her raven black hair. Um, and she spends a lot of time kind of, quite, it's quite strange actually to watch her work. She kind of fondles the metal and sniffs it and smells it. She does the kind of, mm, I don't know, kind of thing. And eventually, uh, after some time, Jamila, which by the way means beautiful in Arabic, Jamila al Safra offers the following. Coming into main chat right now. Um, again, mm. again, she's not interested in the. Uh, in the mithril she hasn't seen it doesn't know what it is i mean she's really quite puzzled about it uh but she, she's certainly not interested in it uh the gold she says you yeah, look she'll, she's doing you a favor she's definitely doing you a favor but she'll take it off your hands uh for 440 gold per you know, per ingot um there's the price for the bronze there and you'll also see the price for the silver well it's back to the first place then Apart from uh, for the bronze. Yeah. So the yeah. gold was 616 in the other place, in the yeah. Copper Phoenix. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, I guess we'll do the bronze, shall we? Do the bronze at the first one from today. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, sure. That's that's the price that uh, Jakob uh, Al Hakim agrees on, and he doesn't seem particularly interested in it. But yeah, yeah, you know, he's happy to sell uh, sell for that price there. You're happy. Uh, go ahead, cash in your cash in your bronze, as much as you wish. Just let me know how much. Well, we may as well take the lot, right? Well, Absolutely. we've got two. We've got we've got two. Two of those. Okay. All right, done. Uh, there is indeed a sale. A what? A sale. Oh, sale. Yes. Uh, and other actions? What do you do? Uh, uh, Nicholas, sorry. so he needs to roll for the ear, the earbuds? Yes, please. <clears throat> yep. So do that just as we're... Uh, had we scoped out a herbalist before? I think we had. Yes, we had. Because a lot of the item shops we first went to were herbalists. Correct. Yeah. Go for so it. probably choose... I don't know which one was our best choice, but the one that we had the best feeling about. And, um, yeah. Uh, that's a 36 with... 36. Four rounds prep. What's, what level spell is that? Does it count for XP? Yes, it does. You take a risk, you make a dice roll, you get XP for it. Yep. Is that a tenth level from memory? From memory, Graham, I think it is. The earbuds, yes, it is. Let's go with that, Pete. Uh, mm -hmm. Might be, might be twenty actually. True. We'll come, come to it later. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'll check later. Cool. Uh, I don't. Nicholas has got a negotiation skill of one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's his. That's his. What is it? Reasoning and I don't. But I don't. I think he won't attempt it. I think we just go with the, the fixed price. Okay. So which was one and a half times. I think we said. Yeah. Did you, you calculated that amount, didn't you, Graham? Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So it's a matter of are those point those antidotes available? Uh, reasonably common. They're not. They're expensive, but they're not. Yeah. They're not stupid expensive. Yes, they are available. Purchase all, all along. Yep. 
Um, are you okay to manage that, Graham, with the deductions and the additions? Yeah, I'll do that. That's fine. Thank you. Great. And then I guess I guess if Gray and I head to the bank, I suppose, after that. And do? Oh, you meet up at the bank? There's a, yep. You yep to... I think you all meet at the bank. Okay. Correct. Yep. You all meet at the bank? What happens? Uh, we'd like to... Well, I guess we, we'll we leave the mithril where it is. Hmm? And we'll remove the rest. Um, we'll extract the rest. And then we'll go back to the bronze mace, or whatever it's called. Hmm? And... Um, Cop Phoenix, rather. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, and um, cash in the copper and the gold. Go for it. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's. Uh, copper Phoenix four. was six. Six sixteen. Sixteen, sixteen, and the copper was nine silver, three bronze, three copper. Go for it. So the, myth, it. Yeah. the the mithril remains where it is, but you cash in all the rest. That's it, yeah. So we've got um, four gold, two bronze, and ten copper. Sure. You guys are rich currently. Yeah, briefly, I think. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're going to spend it all on you, Jada. <laughs> yes. In the expectation that you'll probably have to patch us up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... That seems... Uh, a dead sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, um, you've you've. It's kind of mid afternoon. Oh, sorry, early afternoon. You've been to the bank. You've got your prices. You've been to the bank. Uh, you are now clinking quite quite comfortably. Um, you know, this is a pretty. Uh, you know, it's it, it is a reasonably safe uh, safe city. Um, you know, but. Oh. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're being mindful. Um, just some street scenes. Yes. Any any precautions? Anything I should be aware of? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the weapons will be certainly my characters anyway. I would say uh, weapons will be available, uh, uh, but not on. I think uh, Tanya's happy to keep her short sword by her side. Okay. Severin will put his sword in his pack and put a kind of, I don't know, a golf club warmer over the top of it or something. Um, and, uh, yeah. That's okay. my two. Okay. Cool. Um, you've done those actions. You've collected your, your funds. It's about midday. Uh, by the way, just some other street scenes of, of around Jibai Ritano. Perhaps just a bit of a refresher, perhaps, perhaps for Aiden. This is definitely a, a mixed city that has predominantly um call them Haradanian or Arab type uh, type people who worship um, uh, the three um, or the, the El Tumar gods, so street scenes like this, but also because there is a, a very nearby colony of the Confederation of the San Kush or the, the Easterling Kings, there are also a few people of um, we would in, in our word, would turn them people from Asia I guess, or um, yeah, Chinese, Mongolian type uh, type uh, cultures. Cool. You've done that. You have uh, you've collected the money. You, you're armed as, as described. What do you do uh, um, for the remainder of the day? Uh, we've got to buy the items, haven't we? Go for it. So talk me through what you're purchasing, please, with your hard your your hard earned cash, and it has been hard earned. What do you buy? Well, I'll. I'll start by saying that we'd like to purchase the um, times three multiplier at the first oh. emporium that we visited. Uh, so, Jada, that's, that's yours. I don't believe that's a ring. Anything about that ring we should know? Or... No. I, I think it was just described as a normal ring. Yep. Uh, that was uh, 9, 960 from memory, I think. Yep. Yep, cool. Cool, done. Purchase made. Uh, purchase made, hang on. Hang on. Just made. Purchase made. What now? And then over to you guys with the spells. Nicholas doesn't want to purchase extra spell lists. He did them, got them last time, so he's all good. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, Askel. 
It needs to buy. Just, just to clarify, so if it's available in the library, yep, it means you can read it, but you can't take it. That's it. That's you? it. Yes. Correct. Wait. Okay. Cool. So the bo books, uh, the bookstores are. Um, so the printing press has been around in this world for two, three hundred years. Uh, these would be printed, generally printed copies. Um, not amazing quality, but definitely enough that you can learn and study from. Yes. Cool. Uh, so for Askell, he would buy on the bookstore Sense Enhancement um, for 15 gold pieces, level 1 to 5. Yep. Yeah, by the way, that was, a, that was a bargain. Um, I screwed up on some of the prices, so some of you guys got absolute bargains. <laughs> Enjoy them. <laughs> Cool. Um, and Rune Mastery Askel. Uh, also from the bookstore. Yeah, there was a, a 6 to 10, but I don't have 1 to 5, so I'm kind of screwed. Okay. Um, How much was that one? Uh, 15. Another 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jada. Oh, actually, no, you put updated stuff for Jada as well. Actually, just uh, hang on. So just rolling back Jada. Was it prosthetics, nerve, and organ mastery? Um. Now, those are relatively accessible, and they're relatively cheap. Yes, they are kind of like quote unquote hidden mysteries. They, you know, they're specialist <laughs> knowledge known only to lay healers. However, these are non-offensive spells. They're you know they're they're they are powerful spells but because they're non-offensive and they are healing they're more commonly available than for example your warrior mage stuff Askel. cool what are you buying uh so i think it was um i uh nerve and organ mastery for this for jado so 55 gold pieces Sold. And I'm pretty sure she would want prosthetics. Might oh. meet someone soon that needs a hand. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> that was 55 gold pieces for 1 to 10. And. Sold, sold. Yeah. And she'd take uh, bril brilliance uh, levels 1 to 10 for 30 gold pieces as well. Also sold. Uh, I can't wait to say, would you like a hand? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Music to his ears. Carefully, you might get more than you bargain for then. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. yeah. I suppose she's, she's only going to be able to learn uh, one list at a time, so. Correct. That's probably, probably it for now. Okay. Per level. Oh, yeah. You can learn uh, two per level. There is a maximum of two lists per level you can learn. Yeah, well, I, I guess um, whether Jada wants to buy med medical law and purifications. Oh, no need. Oh, um, Nicholas bought purifications, but, uh, not medical law, but purifications. It's written in Thebronic, but he's bought it. She's welcome to read it. If oh, yeah, good can, point. Yeah, we can... Actually, Nicholas needs to learn written Thebronic. He's got spoken Thebronic. I sort of overlooked that. So, um, yeah. well, he's, he has been learning it. I was doing Yeah, in which case, yeah, Jada probably just take medical law. Just okay. another option. Okay, purchased as well. Very good. Um, what I I didn't get around to doing was sending through stuff for Grey. Um, he, uh, a, That's all good. Yeah. Um, did, sorry, did someone purchase the Elemental Shields book? He would buy that because he has. Is that like barrier law? Yeah, it was on your list of. Um, I, I had a, a list of uh, spells for you: movement and hearts, calm spirits, elemental shields, delving ways. I just didn't get around emailing it through to uh, the team. No. no problem. Um, the only thing is, can Grey read? Uh, he can't, but Askel can. Maybe you could get him to read it to him, and they share a moment together. It would take longer to study, but yeah, yeah. So that would take quite a bit longer. I'd have to figure out how long that would take, but yes, that that could be done. Cool. 
So how much is that one? Uh, 110 gold pieces. Wow. Yes. <laughs> that was not a bargain. No. There we go. Any, it is getting, so that was, not all of those were in the same place, of course. Different, different, so, so a couple of booksellers that specialize in, in medical information, others that, that specialize in other lists. So it has taken quite a bit of time to to go through that that shopping list um was there anything else that you were wanting to purchase that we had pre-discussed because it is getting quite late in the day by the stage um Askel, can you give me the price the last jada spell please uh medical law or... yeah that one yeah yeah that was 45. thanks okay. got yourself a calculator Graham. um yeah, I'll work it out. Epicus? No, 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 other game on the weekend. You've been doing it on screen. I'm doing it on screen, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. All right. Um, any any other... I mean, definitely late afternoon by the stage. Shops are beginning to, to close up. That, that's been a, a very long day of a lot of cups of tea. Uh, um, drunk. Uh, quite a lot of purchasing. Um, quite a lot of checking and umming and ahhing. Prices for things that are less expensive obviously take less time to negotiate, generally. Um, but you know, there's still time that it takes. And and what I'm trying to convey is, you know, in our in our society, you walk into a supermarket, self checkout, you're done. Um, this would take time. Selling somebody something is is often quite a uh, you yeah, know it, it, it's 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 often a time consuming exercise. Late in the day, late afternoon, any any last actions for the day I should be aware of. Um, no, I don't think so. Just to let um, everyone know, uh, we we just um, from cashing in that stuff, we cashed in a total of um, two thousand four hundred and ninety-seven gold pieces. We have just spent one thousand seven hundred and forty-eight gold pieces. <laughs> uh, easy so come, spent, easy go. Easy go. So I mean, we have you know we've we're still seven hundred seventeen plus gold pieces up across the party but I'll work it out um, so in terms of where I remove those from um, are we happy to share the cost of the PowerPoint which is obviously considerable but we will benefit from it um, now how, uh, in terms of sharing the poisons uh, do we want to what about the spells should we put those against the individual characters um Whatever like suits. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. Nicholas, Nicholas bought his individually. Yeah, let's just stick with both. Yeah, but I don't think we, yeah. we, wouldn't see, we wouldn't see someone's stuck. Definitely not. Especially no, no, no. I don't, think that, in the end, but. I don't think they will be. No. Yeah, okay. No. No. Thanks. Thanks, Graham. Thank you. Great job, Graham, on keeping, keeping track of things. Oh, I've got to tell us the guys something. Hang on a minute. Where is it? You don't like um, the ring. So, so when we woke up this wrong morning, color. I forgot. <laughs> no, you get the wrong color. Well, I've got big fingers, my big hands. <laughs> no, um, I need to tell you guys something. So when we woke up in the morning, I was meaning to say that I feel. Where is the message? Uh, no, that was actually sorry. That was oh, that was it? three days ago. That was the twentieth. Oh, so that's past. Okay. You can still Never tell mind, them. You can right? still tell them, but uh... <laughs> okay. Oh, because I guess it still counts. Every day that I'm waking up, I'm, I'm just not feeling right, feeling a bit off and odd. Oh, Having no. uh, night, night you, sweats. No. You, no, you particularly felt bad uh, the night of the twentieth and on the twenty-first. Oh, not every day. No, it's quite unusual. Never mind, but... guys. Never mind. I felt bad a few days ago. I'm all good. <laughs> ah, okay. Interesting. I wonder why. Okay. Yeah, um, let's get back to the game. <laughs> Sorry, Jada, I didn't mean to steal your thunder, but no, that was... That no, was yeah, I wasn't yeah. sure if it was relevant, so thank you. Yep, sure thing. Anybody else doing anything I should be aware of? Um, would Grey be selling maybe some of his many, many items? Uh, potentially? Uh, look, potentially, I'm, I'm going, I am going to say probably out of time today, but you definitely, you definitely can. Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, you've been traipsing around uh, cool. 
um, and probably not speaking. So basically, what we've been relying on is people that speak the language, or the earbuds. Mm. And admittedly, the earbuds only last an hour, Pete. Uh, but yeah, look, uh, potentially. Yeah, it was only it was only for that one purchase, anyway. Yes. Before we um, met back up. Sure. Uh, but um, but definitely, Gray. You, yeah, at a later date. Uh, sure. Tomorrow. Sure. Yep. Cool. Okay. What do you do? Anything else I should know about? Oh, should I do some narration? Mm. Yep. All right. What do we want? <clears throat> How do we get? We've obviously got visitors. How do we want to prepare for our visitors? <clears throat> do we need to um, be ready to go? Maybe. Yeah. We, um, should, we should pack up. Um, yeah. Do we get some, you know, fine cakes and things to serve them, or or do we just order? We probably just order that, right? Yeah. It's... Order some pastries, <laughs> some light refreshments. <laughs> Some refreshments. Um, yeah, yeah, refreshments. I, I know, Graham, you mentioned about making sure we're um, in the chat prior uh, about making sure we've got food for, for a week or whatever. So I know if we did that as part of our pacing I, around as well. For, for simple, common, easy purchases like that, anything that's a standard price that's in the Rollmaster books um, and that's under 10 gold pieces, uh, you're just assumed that you would pick it up at city prices. So, yeah, just awesome. mark it down. Yes, uh, but but considering you've done all that, all that shopping and purchasing, um, yeah, you're definitely out of time today. You're, you know, the day is done. And uh, in terms of you know uh, retail therapy, you guys are retail therapies out. You're knackered. You're quite tired after traipsing around the town. And if you have to drink one more damn cup of tea, you're gonna, someone's gonna have a fit. Okay, so. So moving things on, you, you and, and, and as always guys, jump in if, if I'm jumping the gun, but you head back uh, to, to the Grand Bazaar Lodge, uh, you head in through the common room, you head up to, well, up to your kind of uh, private dining room upstairs, into your, into your various salubrious, very beautiful uh, bedrooms, uh, you put your purchases away in the appropriate place, uh, you then reconvene uh, out the common room. Um, it's by the time you, you do all of that, by the time you get back, it's it's reasonably late. You've had uh, you have a chance for something delicious to eat. Uh, the food the food in this place is just exquisite. You've you've absolutely enjoyed being here. You haven't seen you see kind of in passing your host Alim, who, who you're now quite on quite friendly terms with. You know he nods and smiles and you know gestures, says hello to you. Busy man as always. Um, and it's around uh, 7.30 in the evening at this stage. Um, any, any, anything I should know about any, anything you're doing? Well, preparing for a visit, visitor, you know, so packing our stuff up. Okay. Being ready to go. Um, as I say, ordering some, I assume we'll have find a room that we can meet the people in out of, out of sight. Yes. Perhaps even our own, by our own chambers. Well, the, the the room on screen, if you remember, is kind of like your pri private. Uh, all of the rooms that you're in uh, face onto onto this uh, quite luxurious room. So it's it's not entirely private. People do occasionally come and go throughout, but it's you don't see many people here, and it's large enough that you could kind of find somewhere private to speak. Any precautions you want to take? Oh, what are you wearing, by the way? Bestest clothes. Bestest clothes. Okay, cool. The new fancy pants ones. Okay, cool. Fancy. So everyone, everyone, put on their best refined manners, including you, Gray. No, sni no sniffing. <laughs> well, let's let's just maybe run. just one sniff. Maybe just so one. after a whole, we all hold Gray down while we put his shirt on. <laughs> all right, let's let's go through. Askel, in terms of preparations, what are you wearing? What are you, what are you taking? What, you know, what do you have on you? If I should know anything. Uh. No, just oh, just like everyone else, you know, newly acquired owl scrolls and making sure it's all, you know, your kit bags already. Um, okay. All right. Yeah, what, making sure there's no um, dot or anything on his hands and just move on. Okay. Uh, I guess let's yeah. Any exceptions to that? Anybody anybody doing or taking or equipping themselves in any way I need to know about? 
Uh, no, Gray's actually just admiring himself now that he's, <laughs> it was a, it was a battle to put on the shirt. It was he really fought against it, but he actually he likes the way it looks. It's really good. Excellent. But what are, what are those buttons rated to? All right. <laughs> they're, they're, just it's, it's, it's definitely not buttoned to the top. There's a you know there's a generous amount of skin showing through, but you know it's there. He's feeling he cut yeah, cut, he's, cut, he's cut holes for his nipples. <laughs> um, yeah, Nicholas just thinks that you know he's he's just yeah, got packs ready and everything. He just thinks we should just go with them. You know, these are the people we want to try and get on side with, so we just go with them whatever, wherever that takes us. That's his opinion. Okay, basically. all right, cool. Um, uh, so Severin will have his mask of enhancement ready. Okay, which I believe takes needs half an hour to warm up. Uh, um. Hmm. Yes, whatever the rules were uh, that I put through. But basically, you can't, yeah. you can't cook it beforehand. Yes. So he'll put it on before, you know, they arrive, and um, so that he's ready to roll when they do. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So uh, you've sat down. There's maybe, you know, a couple of perhaps nervous glances going around the room. Uh, and, you know, you're trying to act nonchalant. You... you it's all a little bit weird, kind of looking at each other. You know, you're so used to, you know, goodness. You've some of you have trudged through deserts, um, been shipwrecked uh, together, been through jungles together, been through the in between together. All kinds of bizarre and weird and wonderful places. It is a little bit odd to see each other in such fine clothes and such sumptuous surroundings yes you were very well looked after very well looked after as the saviors of Nath back in Jebai um, Rima but this this yeah it's been a while and this is this is a bit odd so yeah, but you are becoming quite accustomed to it you're sitting down and, and quietly chatting and exactly at the stroke of eight o'clock there is a on the door to this to this chamber the, the wider chamber you're in what do you do exactly on eight o'clock so the eight bells toll get that someone will you <laughs> <laughs> must be prayer time uh, well nicholas nicholas can go and answer it he's sort of obsequious okay so. <laughs> okay um Standing in front of you, Nicholas, is a highly unimpressive little man. He oh, is... <laughs> what? Sorry? We, we match. <laughs> we match, yes. He is... Um, he's of clearly of Arab descent. He's wearing uh, certainly Arab clothes in his complexion. He has a, a short, close-cropped black beard, uh, graying around here. Um, an old, you know, middle-aged, middle-aged man, but just completely and utterly nondescript. Uh, he's not dressed particularly fancily. Um, he's wearing a pair of these newfangled things. In fact, your GM is wearing them. They're these strange pieces of glass that sit on your face, and um, they help you see better. Um, a few people have them, scholars and the like. And indeed, you would say he he looks like a scholar or a, a clerk in fact um as he raises his hand in greeting to you nicholas you see there are ink stains on, on his on his fingers um gray, gray and i don't mean gray as in the character we're talking about but gray is kind of the complexion and just the demeanor of this person and he very humbly just looks at nicholas and says in um, slightly strangely accented, well, Haradanianly, Arably accented South Tongue. Uh, are we all assembled? Uh, yeah, Nicholas will courteously greet him, and um, uh, uh, yes, we are. I believe we're expecting you, and I suppose protocol is that we invite him in. Is that that was the understanding? So yeah, he'll step aside and invite him in. The, the grey little bespectacled man. Uh, not armed, by the way. No, nothing at his side. Um, just simply nods uh, um, as a gesture of thanks, but then shakes his head. He says, "No, thank you. You, you will come with me now." 
Nicholas will turn to the rest of the room and hopefully they've all heard, so he'll de sort of defer to other people for action. Um, uh, his question is, do we bring our belongings, though? And he'll ask it very, 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 you know, meekly. What do we bring? You may bring what you wish. You're not going anywhere. Staying in Jebai Ritana, that is your question. Very, very good. Very but good. you may bring what you wish. No, Nicholas will relay that to the rest of the room, and Nicholas considers himself ready to go. All right. Any preparations from anybody else? Well, I think um, I think Tanya will keep a short sword strapped to her. Yep. But um, you know, nothing more than that. Certainly won't take a bow. Um, Severin would have had his dagger about his person, but certainly. Not his sword. Huh? Anybody else should be aware of? Um, I think. You go, Gray. Oh. Um, I think Gray would have uh, his his axe with him, um, but that'd be it, really. Okay. Kind of tucks his axe into his belt. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's very fine. Sure. Okay. Anybody else? Um, yeah. <clears throat> Haskell um, wouldn't take anything at all. I think he would just go in the spineries. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, you, uh, uh, Jada, sorry? Uh, just think I shall take her dagger. Okay, great. Concealed. Sure. Um, and can you have another dagger on as well? Sure. So you uh, head downstairs following this very, very nondescript. Um, little man and you come uh, I, I won't bring it up on screen but you'll recall the in the um, the Grand Bazaar Lodge where you're staying it's in the it's in it's got a quite a courtyard around it you'll recall it's in the center of quite a courtyard there were some stalls and etc there packed away now because it's it's got it's eight o'clock um, and in, in the courtyard is a a large, drawn by uh, eight horses, uh, large, black, um, how would you describe it? Carriage is probably the best description. Uh, it has no windows, and it has one door at the end. Seated on horses either side are, uh, there are eight, ten horses actually, ten horsemen. Um, they're dressed in just simple uh, grey flowing robes. Each has a sword at their side. Uh, and there are a, a couple of people seated uh, driving the, um, the eight or so horses. I think I said eight horses for the, for the carriage. Um, the the grey, very nondescript man comes up to the carriage door at the back, opens it up and gestures for you to go inside. Um, you go inside. Uh, in there, it's quite spartan, actually. Um, there's a, a, a two benches either side to sit on. Uh, there's uh, a couple of oil lamps, um, and uh, that's that's pretty much pretty much it. There are no windows. The uh, no. sorry, let me uh, just run this off. Um, you head inside, you take your seats, and the little man comes in. Uh, behind you, it's the last to come in, and he closes the door. He doesn't lock it or anything; he just simply closes it. Now we're all assembled, he says in South Town. Uh, you must wear one of these, and he hands each of you a piece of material about this this length. You can't see on screen. Um, you will bind your eyes so you cannot see. Thank you. Just uh, Severin would like to courteously ask him a question. <clears throat> Just ask him whether, um, I mean, he could yeah, uh, say that, that, that that's fine. Um, but um, do we need to bring anything for our meeting? No. Anything in particular? No. no nothing. All is arranged. Right. All is arranged. All right, well, I guess we put our headbands on. Okay. <clears throat> you... And uh, 
Sorry. Sorry, Severin will Severin won't use his mask this time. Obviously, he's saving it for the coming meeting. Okay, sure. So you put put the headbands on, and, and the little man comes up. You hear him around each one of you, and um, he he comes up and, and and checks that they're they're fully covered. And these are proper <laughs> blindfolds. They cover most of your face. Uh, certainly, you can breathe out of your nose and your mouth, uh, and and all the way around your eyes. You're now in pitch black. And uh, with a quiet word, um, there's a crack of the whip outside, and the, the carriage begins to rumble through the streets of Jawai Ritana. You travel for quite, quite some way, and after maybe half an hour or so's time, the, the sounds of the city... Um, begin to fade you, sever- you definitely go through a, a series of gates or doors you you note and the the sounds of the city uh begin begin to fade off um and, and the sound of the markets and, and and voices and you then for a time uh find yourself um walking through a, a complex walking a uh, you're, you're definitely inside. You're, you're taken out of the wagon, I should say. Um, very well treated, very you know, kindly treated. Um, <clears throat> you know, people are there to guide you, and um, you're led uh, inside a building. You definitely, definitely sense that. And then uh, some more doors, and some more doors, and some more doors, and, and then down. Down, down, down. More door. More doors. And then um, there's definitely no camels around. Uh, and then after a while, um, yeah, uh, you're you're definitely getting definitely getting the sense that you're you're underground. Um, you you know you're quite deep underground. You think, and you're then moved through and the voice the same voice of this kind of faceless um <clears throat> this faceless gray man just simply says to you oh, stand here and when the door closes they remove my phone there is no call to prayer either. <clears throat> and you hear slightly distance the sound of voices. Pitch black as far as you're concerned. Just the sounds of flame. Crackle of flame. Should move have moved you to a black screen. And You hear his footsteps, you presume they're his footsteps, disappearing background. And then all of a sudden, this noise. With that, you all remove your blindfolds find yourself yeah you're underground yeah. clearly underground you're assuming these are the massive doors that have closed behind you uh, they're braziers you can hear them burning and looking around you this is what you see definitely underground more braziers down this way. Stone ceiling above you. Statues either side of the door. What do you do? Oh, well, we'll we'll walk on, I guess. Okay. Yep. Yep. Follow on. <laughs> oh, can we still hear the voices? Yes. <clears throat> From a hit or behind? 
coming from this direction. Awesome. Cool. Okay. Move on. Hushed, hushed voices. Move down. And this is what you see, turning the corner. A brazier above. And pretty much just make out there um, <coughs> some stonework through here. The hushed voices that you can just pick up in the background are coming through. Any actions, anything I should know about? I think, well, if unless anyone else feels better, we'll, we'll calmly and walk walk up. Okay. Okay. Do you want a marching order, Meadow, or...? <laughs> Nicholas wants to be at the back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see everyone to go at the front. Okay. Anything else I should know about? It's uh, sandy, by the way, uh, on the floor below. Your character's... Mask on, obviously, at this point. Sorry, say again? Mask on. Okay, sure. And you find yourselves here. So, very first thing is um, there is a can't really fully see it, but it looks like a some kind of stone plinth or, or stone short stone column here. Um, it's it's covered by a cloth, and there's there's an item or an object underneath the cloth. You can just make it out in the light. Uh, looking around here, um, there are more braziers, uh, stonework here. There's a flight of stairs up here. There's a tapestry here. <coughs> But perhaps what interests you the most is you turn around to your left. Massive tapestry here. And you see one, two, three, four, five, six, <clears throat> seven figures seated. Very, very plain seats. Up exactly that distance away from where you come in. And they're watching you. This is what they look like. Coming up on screen. Now. Whoop. Uh, yes. So firstly, <laughs> firstly this one. Not Elmo, I'm taking it. Okay. <laughs> Not Elmo. This one. Oh, yeah. This one. This one. This one. Oh, and finally this one. And yeah, they just watch you come in. They're sitting very, very still. Some, not, <laughs> some of them are quite tall, some of them are quite short. Um, quite a mixture. Your characters uh, come in and assemble. Actions, please. Uh, well, I think uh, a respectful bow from Severin and Tanya. And. Um, Nicholas, too. And if we're not invited to uh, approach, um, if they don't say anything, we'll wait a respectful time to be addressed. Um, and if, if we hear nothing, uh, Severin will um, <clears throat> ask if uh, they might approach to. to, to to um to talk okay um any uh, that's seven and, and tenia nicholas you bow any anybody else do or say anything i should be aware of yes i ask it will be similar just follow follow suit yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just crying i'm sorry i'm just crying <laughs> Crying? Bad. Yeah, look at them. They don't look good. <laughs> <laughs> They're mean. Yeah. Something bad's going to happen. 
Nothing. Actually, can with looking at these statues, is uh, general knowledge or general history of Thamazul or whatever role yeah, give me your of any, any significance? Just give me your um, fifty-one, and so if he's got general knowledge of fifty-eight or general history of Thamazul thirty-eight, I don't know what's applicable. Uh, take any of those. Um, fifty-eight for general yeah. knowledge then. No, pretty nondescript. No. Nothing, nothing really springs to mind, my friend. Yep. yep. <laughs> any other, any other actions? Anything else I should know about? Anything Gray's doing? Um, Gray, Gray would do a little bow, curtsy thing as well, and um, a bow and or maybe... a curtsy. He's he's not sure of the customs. He'll try both. <laughs> um, and he maybe does a little sniff as well, even though it's just a subtle one, not to freak them out, just okay. to kind of you know take things in. Do you want to give me a perception? Sure. A twenty-one. Twenty-one. Sure. All right. And what's his perception? Uh, Thirty-seven. <clears throat> cool. Uh, what is this? I mean, in terms of what you see, that uh, he certainly doesn't gain any more information from um, from looking around. Uh, but um, smelling, yeah, this place smells old, sad. If if if, if sorrow like has moldy? if no no not moldy no very dry actually. Um, uh, th this the city is quite sticky with humidity, but. Uh, but no, no, it's quite quite dry down here. Um, so you're waiting, and Severin just as, uh, but nothing. Sorry, nothing, nothing else, nothing else of, of other than that. You know, kind of old and just a bit sad, right? Um, Severin, as you're, you're basically, you know, it's been quite a fair to say, quite an uncomfortable pause. Uh, and you're just kind of, <clears throat> you know, you're about to do your seven thing and about to ask something, um, ju like just about to, and one of them stands up. Uh, this one here, actually, this person here in the middle. So, uh, going back to the map, this one here. And they say, in, and when I say say you don't uh, you, it's weird you don't know a actually if it's the sound you're hearing and the words are forming in your head or what exactly but they are communicating with you and you're not sure if it's just something about messages coming into your mind or if it's actually words being spoken or what it's very hard and very confused about what the communication is here but you all hear it all of you hear it afterwards you compare in different languages but you all hear it and you will understand it and the person who's just stood up says in a relatively non-dramatic who are you what do you seek from us why should we help you what more tell us about the new enlightenment the right of Azza and those so-called champions of Ely Uma Mitham, Child Keros, Leif, Assassin Nyathanol, Holy Warrior Guild of Flower, Twig Spear. These people stand accused of assassination of one of the infidels' clerics, Oracles, Land of Pytha. What do you know of this? Tell us who you are. What do you seek from us? Why we should help. And at this point, 
we are going to break into something called audience rules. So this is a, an idea that I've borrowed from another system. Rather than just rely on one crunch dice roll, that's a bit unfair. We're going to have an audience, and you guys are going to wish, if you, if you wish to, answer some of those questions uh, or other things that you wish to say. One of one of you, please, is going to be the, the spokesperson. So one of you is going to kick off um, what is said. So they're going to make a roll based on if you wish uh, some kind of charm or what, it, what how, public speaking whatever you, whatever social skill you want to do um <clears throat> absolutely others can speak if if you want to and add to the conversation and i've set aside a whole list of things which might find favor or might not find favor um and basically as the conversation goes i'll be kind of keeping score of what you say Anybody else may make a roll, and if you if you're feeling if you're feeling lucky, you can roll a social skill, a charm, or a diplomacy, or a whatever you like. Make a roll. Um, there is always the chance that you could do extremely well. There's also the chance that you may bottom out. Um, but at the end, there'll be kind of closing remarks uh, by the spokesperson. And what I'm trying to get a balance of is kind of an introduction to the entire party. And I would like every person to, to speak, even if they're just simply... Uh, yeah, every person needs to speak to make it kind of balanced as a, as a full audience. And they have asked you who you are. Um, up to you if you want to, to roll or not. But there is definitely one roll by the spokesperson to begin with. One roll, the closing remarks, by the spokesperson at the end. And the reason I'm kind of doing this is... Um, to, to balance it up so basically it doesn't come down to just one crunch number it's spread out it's the risk if you want to call it that is spread over a number of things. so uh gm is going to have a quick chat uh sorry the good gm is going to nip out to the loo very fast to, to give uh, you guys a chance to speak but the questions were who are you what do you seek from us why should we help you and tell us more about uh the new the new enlightenment new right of us and the so-called champions of Ely, the other party. Have a think. I'll be back in literally like two minutes. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, luck. So, so new, new enlightenment is that? That's Papillus's one, right? Yeah, that's the other one that we're not. We know we. Oh, that so we, that's, that's, we, that's yeah, Chonka's we, one. Yeah. Why well, I don't want to know more about that because our <clears throat> one is, is Hammer of New Age, eh? Yeah, because they don't know anything about it. That's why. Um, right, of course, yeah, you're right. Yeah, because uh, just as the... Uh, look, uh, quick, here's my thinking here. I think we'd be honest about our... Honest about the TTP and what we know about it. They presumably know anyway because we've told the other lady. Mm -hmm. um, I think we tell the whole story as much as we know. Uh, I think we probably don't get... We go into less detail about the hero party except to tell the tale of what happened at the Oracle of Pytha and their, you know, essentially the the Oracle's extreme response to uh, being in the presence of people who have been in the presence of the gods. Do you think that's okay. a right? Yeah, uh, essentially. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We, can, we can only relate what the Hope Hero Party told us, so we can yeah. put ourselves at one remove from them. Yeah. But I don't think we vol volunteer any information about them otherwise, other than their you know, keep it vague. Just in case. Hey, I've got the questions. Who are you? What do you seek? What was the other ones? Why should they help us? Oh, yeah. That was the last yeah. one, eh? And they want us to tell them more about the New Enlightenment Union and the Hero Party. And oh, their... bags, you guys do that because I wouldn't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> New, New yeah. Enlightenment, what? <laughs> So that's the that's the other arm of the TCOS people that we are not like, we're not chasing. Oh, they're the baddies. I've lost my sheet where I wrote down yeah, who was the, who was yeah, bad. Yeah, the okay. New Enlightenment unit are the baddies. That's the hero party you're after. What are oh, Thank you. Yep, so, it was, who are you? What do you seek? Why should we help you? Who are the hero party? Yep. 
Oh, um, no. we all have to talk. Oh, my boy. I'm going to be so oh, Who feels comfortable talking about what? Uh, I can't answer any of those. Um, <laughs> I think, uh, I think, I mean, say Sa- we are. Severin's happy to do the, the charm rolls at the beginning and yep. end. Yes, please. And cool. I guess maybe he'll do a, how about if he does a summary? Yeah, and, and then, then, then I'll just say I can <clears throat> her. <laughs> so who are you? Who do you seek? Why should we help you? Who are the help? hero party? And yeah. uh, what are the new enlightenment? New new enlightenment. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, now, usually, uh, what I will say is usually. Um, ch- charm interaction rolls are done openly so they're not masked dice rolls yeah but with all of these you'll see and the, and the reason we do that is you can see the effect that your words have on your audience you know if you're charming them or you're kind of being effective there's a reasonable chance you get a vibe of how your words are either landing or, or not landing every single one of these you'll notice are masked you can't see their faces you don't know what they look like can't see any emotion or any reaction to your words. Hence, the dice rolls will be masked. Who's starting you off, please? So Severin will start off and he'll be uh, charming. Um, <clears throat> in terms of what's the difference really between a public speaking and a charm, really? Uh... Uh, public speaking would be for... It's probably a definition, but basically, um, public speaking is a very large audience. I wouldn't consider this public speaking. No, be. no, I wasn't sure how many no. con- constituted it. No. Okay, well, he he would do a conventional, non-magical charm. Cool. Uh, um, give me your roll, please. Last. Uh, Fifteen, just as well as last. Yes, indeed. Um, plus 65. Okay. Plus 65. Cool. Um, now, I, I would say to to others that may be hesitant, um, if you want to add to the conversation, don't have to roll the dice. There are only two rolls that are needed: the closing and ending. But uh, you know, you'd be encouraged to roll if you think you you you're going to succeed. But you don't have to roll. You can also just simply say something, because and if you think it's going to be something that might actually win you, for want of a better term, brownie points, I encourage you to say it, because um, there's a certain criteria that I've listed down previously, uh, and I would like everybody to say something. Um, to to uh, I encourage you to say something, because it may. Sorry, just a bit of back no- background noise there. Thank you. If you could just. Hello. 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 Thank you. Sorry, just hard to hear myself think. Um, thank you. Uh, I would encourage everybody to say something. So, um, Severin157, uh, uh, and please do give the opportunity to turn to your companions and ask them to say something. What does Severin say with with his opening, opening remarks, please? <clears throat> so, look, he's going to be honest. He's going to obviously assume that, you know, they have means of telling otherwise. Or... And he will repeat exactly what he said to the leader of the solar council assuming they have talked so he'll, he'll say a very similar thing in terms of giving their actual names um and explain that they um they were simple adventurers but have become em- embroiled in a in a higher task that affects the old order as we know it um and we'll, and we'll explain that um they are wanted by the remnants of the republic of Harang, mm-hmm. um, and for uh, and he'll explain he'll go over the you know uh, he'll mention the situation in Narth uh, and uh, what ensued um, he'll do this relatively briefly um, he'll, he'll run through the whole kind of he'll summarize I suppose before going into more details um, what do we seek well we, we we seek to save the old order in our own modest way we've become embroiled in it we we have come to appreciate the dire circumstances that the old order, the world as we know it, is is under. Mm. And in our own modest way, as best we can, 
uh, we we will seek to help make things right and preserve all that is good in in this in this world. Um, why should we help you? Um, we understand that from from and he explains how they know Ningwen and then also the queen of the, the uh, head of the solar council we understand that we we are led to believe that we have goals in common and that perhaps we could help each other or uh, and um, work towards a common goal and and so we're here to discuss that with you and uh, if you have any information or indeed any practical help to help us fulfill those common aims we would be most grateful um, and in terms of who are the hero party, we'll say we have met a similar group of companions who have also, under similar circumstances, become embroiled in something much bigger. Um, they have discovered a separate faction of the Torang People's Government um, called the New Enlightenment Union, who they are also hunted by them separately. Um, and they have also upon themselves to bring that that party to task and try and prevent this other faction from also bringing about calamity in a similar way that the committee is trying to undertake um he'll explain we can explain what we know of the new enlightenment union via what the hero party have told us and what we have heard from members of the committee who've been discussing this alternative faction um we know through conversations that the hero party did not bring about the death of the oracle and in fact the oracle leapt from the tower of her own volition the hero party believe they are on a, a, a sent by the gods themselves and have had and indeed interactions with divine beings uh, and they believe that the Oracle. Just, just with that, with that comment about they believe they are on a divine interaction. All of you hear a slight. Take a breath from one of them, or more of them. Um, and yes, but they were not responsible for the death. So the um, oracle took exception to their presence and in their words became aware of that association and so to the shock of all including the party uh, she uh, leapt from the tower of her own volition they were actually there quite innocently to present a, a gift on behalf of their benefactor um, so this is very in very brief terms this is this is why we're here and we thank you um, for allowing us audience to to just discuss the matter, of course, we'd be more than happy to go into more detail as you so wish. Okay. So everyone, I'll ask you to make a, a closing roll. Um, what do the rest of you say? And does anybody want to make a roll? Um, can I? Well, oh, yeah. Sorry, you go, you go. No, you go, Jada. Ah, uh, just wanted to sort of. Well, I don't want to talk directly to them because I'm so quiet, but I'd like to whisper to Askel if he could talk. like So I can whisper to him and Askel talks to them. Mm -hmm. So I'm whispering to him, like, don't you think that looks a lot like the hero party? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and then um, I'll just ask if he can say to them, um, I'm willing to offer the use of my healing powers if they need that, because um, clearly they've got some terrible facial disfigurements. Oh, no, I wouldn't say that part. That's just <laughs> privately. But, you sure? But I, to, yeah. I am grading <laughs> no, no, this conversation. No, no. Um, yeah, just just to ask Escort to tell them that I can be of use as a healer. Um, really keen to sort of stop the end of the world and you know save the save the righteous and the heathens. Okay. Oh, and the heathens. No, um, the heathens I'm with. Uh, these ones. I see. <laughs> okay. Jada, comments from others? Yeah, I, th I think if, if Severin was allowing, I mean, I, I assume that we were sort of just chiming in as he was going. Uh, when he was talking about preserving the status quo, Nicholas would have quietly sort of piped up that, you know, as a magic, a humble magic user himself, he believes in the the 
value of magic and preserving it and, and finds that Tarang's intention to dissolve magic and, re and re remove magic distasteful mm -hmm. um, and and would be would disable our many many aspects of our culture um, and that he strongly believes in the status quo and that believes that the 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 order as it stands is, is has got so much value. I mean, he's lived a, a, a peaceful life, and um, you know, within this within this, the structures in the society that we live in, he does not see the need for change. Um, he'd also, um, I suppose, when Severin was talking about the hero party, would want to just reinforce that their beliefs about their the nature of their mission was their opinion, and. It was not. We don't. We don't share that opinion necessarily, and nor does it reflect on us. We. They were simply people we associated with, so we would wouldn't want to be. Um, you know, their 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 opinions to associate to, to put cast us in a bad light. Okay. Thank you, Nicholas. Anybody else? Um, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> when when uh, Severin's talking about the hero party, <laughs> Gray would probably like to say that uh, the hero party is very brave and good and his favorite is the small one who smells <laughs> like springtime and rain <laughs> and the tall one is very brave and strong and has good legs but <laughs> not as good as gray's legs <laughs> excellent thank you gray <laughs> excellent if it's possible Behind a mask to see eyebrows being raised, to see the eyebrows are being raised. Thank you, Gray. Lovely. Uh, anybody else? Anybody else? Game enough to make a roll? No, no pressure. You don't have. Don't have to. Only two rolls have to be made. But uh, yeah, you're cool. If you. If not as cool. Not as cool. If you're feeling lucky enough. No, I don't. I don't think it's worth risking. I'll get, I can give a roll. Are you skills in uh, any form of diplomacy? Oh. Oh, no, I don't think I am, no. Or, Never mind. or presence? I can hip hypnotize presence? them. Uh, no, uh, it needs presence. to be a skill. It would need to be a skill. Okay. Modified by presence, yeah, sure. But... Did, did, oh, did Severin talk about the right of Azza? No, I mean, yeah, we could, talk, we could talk about that, couldn't we? Well, I think I was going to repeat what I said to yeah, the... True, true, yeah, you haven't yeah, done yeah, your wrap-up yeah. yet. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, have, yeah. well, I have a plus 27 in presence. Is that a lot or not, really? So, so, the way, so the way Rollmaster skills work is um, if you're unskilled in a skill, so this would be whoops, uh, diplomacy, charm, kind of a mixture of kind of all of those, you would have a negative 25 because you haven't got any kind of training or you haven't specialized in the skill. That is offset by um, your stats. So seduction, which is charm, is... Uh, Oh, Graham, you might have to beat me to it, uh, is empathy and presence. So if your empathy bonus plus your presence bonus is more than negative 25, then you've got a bonus. Otherwise, it's it's a negative. Um, up to you whether you want to, to make an attempt or not. Yeah, really. oh, who's, oh, who's got the highest? I've got plus 27 presence plus 3 empathy. Well, the, the reason... No skill. The reason Severin's talking is because he's got quite a lot of he's charm. Got the most. Yeah, oh, can you so do both rolls? Yeah, that was oh, that was oh, the plan. Uh, that, all right, yeah, cool, only cool, playing cool. the playing the stats really, but yeah, yeah, yeah. If, cool. Don't. Yep. Yeah, okay. Don't have to play the stats, of course. You can do whatever you want. Um, Askel, do you say or do anything, please? No, no, I don't think Askel's got much to contribute. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He's got to say something. No, he doesn't. Yeah, he does because 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 Chris is waiting for oh, something. Chris, say something. Kind of nice. This is kind of an important <laughs> conversation, and I am grading. It'd be kind of nice if uh, Askel contributed yeah. something. Yes, yeah, just I, try for something. He's he's listening for something. We don't know what. I have to think on it then. I, 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 I honestly can't up. think of what to say. Okay. They compliment their lovely faces. Oh, can I? Oh, can I? The one thing I think that Askel mm. would be aware of. Do you, do you want a suggestion? Uh, Nicholas, Nicholas was basing his magic comment based on knowing the principles of the Empire of Tarang, which is getting rid of magic and getting rid of other races in Askel's half album. So maybe he could speak to that. I don't know. Uh, 
think he's a bit, bit in one way. Well, just just that he is a well, you know, if he is against the empire of, empire of Tarong because they're going to be they stand for getting rid of racial diversity and and he's half elven, so he would be they are against him by the, his very race. Maybe some of these people are elven, and perhaps they you know perhaps that's one thing to win a point with you know making the point that we're against them because of that as well. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm cautious because because they're all masks. We uh, don't actually know who they are. What we could be digging ourselves deeper. Could with be the TTOP in disguise. With this GM, surely not. This is uh, yeah. I think we're working oh. from the idea that these are associates of the Mon Men, and the Mon Men are a secret society directly opposed to the Empire of Tarang and their beliefs. Well, why do they look so hideous? They look like mm, bad yeah. people. Because mm, they're hiding. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're rich. Well, the Mon men are all for status quo, which is rich being richest and everyone else having to suffer for it. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I, I think yeah. we're taking we're taking a risk, right? But if uh, we, we, as we discussed last time when we spoke to the Solar Council, we thought, well, if we're going to lay our cards on the table at any point, this is it. Well, this is probably the point, right? Uh, we wouldn't normally do that, but at this time. Because Ningwen recommended this, this lady, the Solar Council, and the Solar Council has referred us on to these people, we can only assume we must have something in common. We might be horribly wrong, right? But uh, if we don't, if we don't do it now, I can't think of a better moment since we know the Monmen will probably share some aims. But you know, they're out for themselves as well. But you know, we, mm. you know, if, if if so, we are. It's a risk, but you know, it's probably one worth taking. Because we need intel from them anyway. Ask cool. Any comment? No, no pressure if you don't. I mean, I don't want to put anybody any under pressure. If you want to leave it, no problem. And I'll ask for Graham to sum up. Just making sure that everybody's got a chance in the spotlight. No, no, no. I'll leave it for Eskel. He'll stay. All right. Play club. Okay. Uh, back to Severin to kind of. Oh, and does Tanya say anything? No, no. Okay. okay. Severin, a bit of summation, please. And this, by oh. the way, uh, um, make this roll really, really good. Please. Please. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Don't forget it's masked. 86. Oh, oh, oh. masked. Damn. Yeah, plus 65 again. Um, I look, and I think in the summary, he'll, he'll, I mean, he's, he's gone through everything he said to the head of the Solar Council. And, and he said already, if they want more detail, I'd happily give it. Hmm? Uh, he'll say, you know, uh, I... I suppose, first and foremost, what we seek is, is information to, to carry through this task, which we believe is in anybody's interest who, who takes some joy in this the world in which we live. As you see, we are a disparate bunch of people who have come together under one cause, and for different reasons we care passionately about what we're doing, whether it's because we have served in a train of command, uh, a fixed train of command and, and know the value of, of discipline, or whether we are from different races who face face persecution, whether we are from privilege and wish to see that privilege maintained, uh, whether we are skilled in magic and wish to see the continuance and magic thrive in this world. For so many reasons we've come together uh, because we value society and the way that it works and everything that's within it it's as simple as that um and we we hope that you have similar feelings and similar aims and this is this is why we're here okay. cool. yeah and i guess he, he wouldn't mind perceiving you know, yeah, give me, yeah, if give, me, if, give me if he's able to, you know. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. guess the, the mask, he'll expend a, a, a bonus on the mask. So he's only got roll 36, however. Oh, it's masked. Uh, masked, masked, masks. Uh, plus, plus 36. So his normal perception is 72, but with the mask, he gets a plus 25. I thought he had to. Doesn't he have. Oh, it's automatic to put the mask on, isn't it? He's got the mask on already, yeah. Yep. yeah. So, uh, t okay, so, so sorry. Um, his normal perception is again, please. Sorry. His normal perception 
is 72. Mm -hmm. plus. Uh, plus 25 for the mask. Five. Cool. And then roll itself. Sorry. Uh, okay. Um, uh, no, he really doesn't see or hear anything untoward. Uh, or maybe one thing. Possibly is there... Down here... Can't see where I'm pointing. Can't be. Can if I do this. Down, down here at the very back wall. There might be the very faintest outline of a doorway, kind of carved into the rock, very cunningly carved into the rock. Hard to see. But other than that, Severin, um, no, you can't. You can't see anything else. There's the the faces in front of you are masked. A lot of yep. masking going on, so you you really can't read what's happening. So there's a pause, a very long, feels like a very, very long pause, feels like an eternity. And the person who had originally stood up to speak, I forgot to say, had sat back down. This person stands up again, and this time they take several steps closer towards you. Come to here. And there's a pause. They say... We thank you for your words. All around this good earth, there are groups like us believe in the way things should be, the way things are. Right with the wealthy to rule. Rights, gods to judge. Way of magic and this he kind of a slight inclination of his head in Nicholas's direction. Way of magic, strong. Yes. The infidel, this he, he, she, hard to know, figure, fixes its gaze, and its gaze travels to Severin, Tanya, Nicholas, Grey, particularly. Yes, the infidel have their own misguided view that their untrue god should be the ones that are followed we know that the correct way is the way of the three it's a gesture a slight inclination again to a nod of the head to Askel and to Jadar however while we may not always see eye to eye on matters of faith and no matter which fool sits on which throne, really care not, so long as the great machine is turning. The old order. Order is held its world intact, and will hold its world intact. Pause. He steps a little bit closer. He, she. Your path and our path seems aligned. We seem to have a common foe. Do you truly believe? Have you read the right things, the right words, like that excellent piece of work, the subhuman in place, and others which clearly explain how the world should be? You really know hearts of hearts that it is correct, wealthy to triumph. And for our good gods, the three. Do 
do you believe? And you prove it. Wish to help you. And we can help you. Yes. Can help you. Do you believe? Can you prove it? At least once a year, we, in this order, fulfill the reaffirmation of those that believe the Rhine right of the rich. It is the God's will that those who have granted us privileges should have it and complete the reaffirmation to hold that that is true. All over this clean, good earth, there are groups like us each year that perform the reaffirmation. Tonight, perform the reaffirmation of our faith to hold that it is true. The reaffirmation of the divine right rich. The reaffirmation that the strong and those that are means should triumph ultimately because it's the natural order. It is the way of the world. Tonight, we host our reaffirmation here. Are encouraged to prove, to believe in natural order. He moves forward to the plinth here, quite relatively quickly, pulls the cover off the plinth, and lying on the plinth is a knife. Very plain knife. Flash it all. He, she, it picks up the blade and walks over here. Walks up, up onto this platform, and with a flourish, rips this tapestry off. And there, bound at the very end, is a man. He is in chains and helpless. He looks like this. An old man. A beggar man. A poor man. Chained, helpless, and gagged. He stands there, his eyes bulging in fear. Utterly terrified, completely and utterly helpless, bound by the chains. As this figure, up on the stage, turns back and looks at all of you. And there's a pause as this figure takes up the knife. Blade first, turns the knife around with the handle facing towards the group and gestures. The reaffirmation, he says, or she says, and the rest of the six in the room say the same words. The reaffirmation. What do you do? Well, in oh, Eskel's, gonna... Eskel's mind, he is thinking, you son of a guns. You get to do it once a year. I have to do it every month. Lucky <laughs> bastard. <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> That's what he's I thinking think... in his head. I'm going to pass out immediately and fall down and faint. <laughs> so, from the cognitive dissonance here. <laughs> uh, 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 might be your moment, Ask. <laughs> I did moment. something two nights ago. I am <laughs> done for the month. Oh, <laughs> oh someone has to do it again. <laughs> I, I have a personally signed copy of the subhuman in their place. Like, yeah. I know the author very well. Any actions? For, I'm going to quickly go around. Uh, very first off, uh, starting with Nicholas. Uh, Nicholas uh, doesn't like blood. 
Um, <laughs> but he doesn't. But but he doesn't mind mental mis- mental discomfort and anguish. So he he's not keen to do it. But um, and it is distasteful. But this person's going to die anyway. So he doesn't particularly want to do it. Um, he will just continue to watch. Mm-hmm. But he's not particularly uncomfortable. Okay. Okay. Seven. Uh, doesn't say anything. Okay. Does he do anything? No. Okay. Uh, what does Jada do? If anything, say or do anything. Offer the lot of them as tributes. <laughs> 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 I knew you people. <laughs> no, no, seriously, she's so freaked out. She's just fainted okay. because oh. she she can't she can't grasp like you know like she's her whole point of life is to save the world and all of the people. Even she even helps heathens, and but she knows if she doesn't do something, she doesn't. If she says something right now, she's going to ruin it for everybody. <laughs> So and um, and the blood just she's been so tired lately the blood just drained out of her. she's so tall too the blood t- it's a lot to get to her head and she just collapses okay cool Jada's out I hate to say it she is ignored at least by the other people in the room it's up to other characters what they do thank you Jada one okay uh, Askel once again he looks around the group group looks over at them it's like you bastards <laughs> does he say that <laughs> no he's definitely thinking it <laughs> okay cool uh gray please uh oh, he's he's kind of freaked out um he's yeah he's not a fan of killing people if he doesn't have a reason to uh so he's <laughs> i don't know he's just kind of looking at the rest of them to see what What's going to happen? He's not All right. sure. All right, cool. And so, like... as cool, yep. as cool would be, I guess, he he knows what this is about. Um, it's at the far end of the reaffirmation. Um, but I guess he's looking at like uh, he's got the group party of obviously never ever been exposed to this, never done that, done this. Askel has. Um, he is very torn. Okay. Tanya, please. You know. uh, again, she's not doing anything. Oh, sorry, I cut you off there, Askel. Nothing from Tanya. Okay. Askel, any actions? Once, twice, gone. Okay. So the the person on stage again kind of proffers the knife in your direction. None of you move. Bray is kind of looking around. Nicholas, you're checking Jada, who's fainted. It's kind of indecision around. Figure pauses again for a third time, proffers the knife. Nothing. Turns back to this utterly terrified, helpless man up on stage. Grabs his head back and cuts his throat. There's a gasp of blood. A gurgle. Sickening choke as this pitiful individual breathes his last slit throat his head falls forward figure on stage drops the dagger and walks back takes a seat and the second he she a person's backside hits the chair there is just simply Two words said by everybody. The reaffirmation. There's then a pause, and this figure here gets up, comes forward a little. They reach into their cloak. So this figure, uh, where are we? This figure here. <coughs> and they say the following. Different voice this time, different sounds in your heads. The following. You did not take part in our reaffirmation. It is ultimately choice. 
We have asked for our help. We can help. You're wealthy beyond your wildest dream. We can offer assistance, transportation, contacts, items, money, all to aid you struggle against the enemy. Ways of moving in their accursed land that will shield you from prying eyes and aid in uncovering whatever devilry the age are attempting to complete. We can help. Oh yes. But. We ultimately need to decide if you are worthy did not take part in our reaffirmation. He puts an object down on the plinth. Moves up. He, she. Go with he. It's a folder. It looks like it's made out of leather. Like a, it's like a document folder. Voice goes on and then sips back. Voice goes on. We ultimately need to decide if you are worthy. This document and this map remains here. You may read it at your leisure. You are ready up to the doors from whence you came and it shall open you will be blindfolded again taken back to your accommodation tomorrow night same time as tonight same man come to your accommodation and should you wish to be tested bring you back here for your answer If you do not wish to be tested, you will be left to your own devices and the fates. Think wisely. With that last word, wisely, all seven of them get to their feet. And as one, move to the back of the room silently, utterly silently. You are right, seven. There is an opening there. A door in the stone opens, and one by one, they slowly exit through that door, <clears throat> and the door closes silently behind them, leaving you with seven chairs, a slaughtered man tied to the front, manacles and chains, and a plinth with a leather folder on it. What do you do? Well, should we read the folder? Yep. Yeah. Don't heal the guy, you guys. <laughs> let's uh, let, let, let's, 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 park, let's park our other conversation for the yeah. moment, and um, maybe somebody can read out the folder, and the rest of us could listen. So there's more chance of us. Actually, I'd, oh, like, yeah, yeah. I'd like each person to take a page, please, if that's all right. Uh, you. Cool. Who would like to kick us off? Coming into Discord chat now. Nicholas will check on Jada as well, just want to see if he can revive her. Yes, uh, Jada, you come too. Nicholas is standing over you. Um... Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we're oh, I'm mode. so freaked out. <laughs> All God, right. She's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Any actions from Jada as she comes too? Someone's father, someone's brother. Totally, totally. Son. Totally. Do you feel good no. about yourselves, people? I don't know. You tell me. Who would like to kick off, please? Uh, there is a document now in main chat. Um, who would like to open it up and oh, start reading? I'll, I'll start. Sure. Okay. Go for it. Jewel Island and Ticos Arms Shipment. The task. In eight days' time, on Queen's Day, second year's end, two large disguised Ticos cargo ships will stop at Jewel Island 
in the archipelago of Mornshade, South Catala Sea. To collect a reportedly huge shipment of weapons, poisons and other tools of terror and mayhem. The stockpile has been quietly accumulated for many, many months and it's understood this cache will be distributed into a wide number of Ticos cells scattered around the Sea of Cantana and Valder Ukon land. Blimey. The land of the mercenaries, the Sea of the Nomikos, and potentially the Sea of Sagasta. This cannot be allowed to happen. You will go to Jewel Island, find the stockpile of weapons, eradicate all you find there, and then signal for our cargo ships to come and collect the shipments and extract you from the island. Oh, one last thing. There is an object in the folder. Well, actually, accompanying the folder, I forgot to mention. It looks like... Uh, put that back on. One second, folks. Just one second. Open the defibrillator. <laughs> Just one second. It's a uh, bit of meth. It's uh, this. A magic wand. Yep. So, sorry, Graham, I cut you off. Go for it. Uh, right. Anyway, we've got the idea. Resources, assistance, intelligence. Exact numbers of either Ticos operatives, guards, or any mercenary associates. It's not known, but the number is estimated to be around 25 to 30. It is highly likely that Ticos Sector Chief Marlos Ormelian, codenamed the Black Baron, will be present awaiting the transport vessels. Ormelian is an older man with grey hair, often dressed in fine clothes. A deadly foe with a rapier, one of the best swordsmen in the south of Quintana, he would be a great asset if it's possible to take him alive. We don't have a good record for that. Eight weeks ago, our informants have told us that Ormelian met and provided support to Torvash Pipalis and remains in the remains of an expedition in the free city of Landania. Ormelian will certainly have more information. If he can be taken alive, a very dangerous prospect. We will transport you to the to and from Jewel Island. Travel time from Jebi Ritana to Jewel Island will be around three days cruising at a height of <laughs> you will be given this signal rod one of you will need to adapt yourself to its use it allows the user to cast a wide array of ray of light of any color they can be seen up to 10 miles long from the rod whoever casts this spell for you needs to make the, its color red our ships will regularly scan the sky with eyeglasses and other means they'll be looking for your sign once spotted our ships will arrive to collect you in the shipment. The rod is returned to us. Once you are back on board, further instructions, and depending on how well you do, further to aid, transport money, contracts, etc. may be provided. The accompanying copy of a map and the information below is from a survey from 120 years ago and details Jewel Island from a time when there was a discussion about attempting to repopulate certain islands in the Mornshade with goodly people. Well, I don't know what they call goodly people. We have no idea how accurate the map is now, and it's the only one we could find. The rod, this map, and our transportation are the only resources we will provide. I mean, why would they help us save the world? Um, other than what is what is in this document, we don't uh, we do not know more. We do not know nor have any idea where the Tikos weapons cache is on Jewel Island itself. Nor do we know if the fisher folk and the general cutthroats who used to live in this dismal island still do so. Nor do we care. The archipelago of Mornshade and the Jewel Island are backwaters, unpleasant, interesting corner of the Cantana Sea that few give much mind, and we know no more. Who would like to take over? Thank you. Great reading, Graham. Anybody else? Yeah, Go Gray, you, you've been missing for far too long. <laughs> well, Aiden, I should say. Okay. Uh, second page. <clears throat> Why is the... Hi! Hi! <laughs> uh, we have the resources and contacts to deal with this issue ourselves. However, you are seeking our further assistance with other activities. This is a test to see if you are worthy. If you are strong, resourceful, and ruthless enough to complete this task against our enemy, you will be judged, and any further assistance we may be able to provide you will hinge on your success or failure. Note, the following is from a survey dated Harvest of 1665. For, in quotes, the Forsaken Archip 
Pelago of Mornshade. In the waters of the southern, um, southwestern Katana Sea lies a collection of islands forgotten and largely ignored, and the Mornshade, a Lego for their sorrowful past. While they are roughly while there are roughly fifty of these islands, they range vastly in size. The smallest, barely half a mile in width, are often nothing more than rocky outcrops jutting defiantly out of the sea. The larger ones stretch for nearly twenty-five miles, yet even these are a wild mix of dense, twisted jungles, barren rocky landscapes, and sparse, wind-beaten pine groves. To the west, the suspicious des desert dwarves of Nine Jamas keep a wary eye on the archipelago. Their stony shores are constantly patrolled by intimidating war vessels, ensuring that no intruder from the islands dares to tread upon their sacred sands. The south brings with it the rank and decaying aroma of the ala Bean, the green fester. This morass of rot is home to unim unimaginable horrors and tales of undead, of undead that prowl the swamp by night. This same southern stretch leads to the dismal mosquito-ridden free city of Endeana, always struggling, forever damp and grimy, fighting an internal battle against the encroaching swamps. No one rules these islands, isolated from the rest of the world by the expanse of the Katana Sea to the north and east. The archipelago has developed a very small insular community of desperate souls. The few people that live there, there uh, sorry for the for a few people that live there, the islands are home to those waifs and strays who have no other refuge, a sad assembly of impoverished fishermen, hand to mouth farmers, cunning smugglers, ruthless pirates, and outlaws running from a shadowy past. It sounds like us. Uh, <laughs> History of Mornshade Archipelago. <clears throat> uh, hidden within the expanse of the Katana Sea, the Mornshade Archipelago has always been a place caught between the ebbs and flows of great powers. Its history is like the wind, shifting constantly with dominant forces rising and falling with the tide of the ages. The Second War of the Scathus. It was during the Turbulent, turbulent years of the Second War of the Scapus, some 250 years ago, that the Mornshade Islands once again became the slightly became slightly significant, albeit briefly, as the legions of the Scapus spread their terror. Refugees, including the strange Nuit of Tarek Nev, sought refuge on the Mornshade shores. These refugees didn't arrive empty-handed. They brought with them the weight of their cultures, their relics, and their gods. Shrines and temples echoing the alien beauty and airy dark aura of Nuriti deities soon dotted some of the islands. The safety of the Mornshade was short-lived. The hordes of the Scathus, ever expanding their dominions, soon set their sights on these islands. Oh, while their interests were fleeing, fleeting due to the island's lack of strategic and resourceful allure, their dark presence left an indelible mark. Islands were ravaged, settlements pillaged, and the newly built temples desecrated. Rumours of whis rumors whispered amongst the seafarers and islanders speak of some of the remnants of Scathus undead legions perhaps still lingering on some of the islands. Who's next? Thank you. One or a bit more pages. Up. I can read that. Oh. We're up to the aftermath. Huh? The years that followed the war were marked by a rapid return to obscurity for the Mornshade. With the major powers once again embroiled in mainland politics and disputes, the islands resumed their dormant state. The remnants of the Nureti civilization tried to rebuild both in the Mornshade Islands and more generally in the south of Katana, but their numbers had dwindled and their spirit was broken. The temples and shrines, once symbols of hope and resistance, now stood as somber reminders of a tragic past. Environment. 
As for the environment, the archipelago suffers from a perpetual haze of humidity. This has given birth to scrappy jungles with trees so twisted they seem like they're writhing in agony. When it isn't humid and hot, it's pouring rain as if the heavens weep for the forsaken souls below. The northern and western islands bear the brunt of this rain, leading to the growth of spindly pine trees, offering a stark contrast to the otherwise green and brown landscape. Jewel Island. Despite its endearing name, this 12-mile length island at its longest point is steeped in sorrow. According to local folklore, it was once the home of a beautiful princess who was in love with a common fisherman. Their love was forbidden, and in their desperation they hid on this island. However, their love story met a tragic end when they were found and separated by the princess's royal kin. On moonlit nights, it's said that their mournful spirits can be seen wandering the shores forever in search of each other, with the princess forever clasping the huge jewel given as a love token to her by her fisherman love to her breast. Some features of Jewel Island. The Big Wood. Dominating the north landscape is the Big Wood. The heart of this forest is a reasonably dense jungle with thick vines, underbrush and overhanging canopies that particularly block out the sun. The periphery of the big wood gradually shifts from the suffocating jungle to wind-beaten pine groves. These pines, gnarled and twisted from the relentless wind, stand as sentinels on the edges of the forest, their needles often creating a soft carpet on the forest floor. Safe Harbour To the north lies Safe Harbour, a misleading name for an inlet that, while providing refuge from the turbulent sea, hides its own dangers with shifting sandbars and unpredictable currents. Nearby, separated by a narrow stretch of land, is Trout Lake, a brackish body of water. The lake's waters are still reflective and are said to be teeming with fish, a vital food source for any brave soul, soul brave enough to settle on the island. Some scattered fisher folk scratch out an existence here. Deep Cove. On the western flank, the rugged coastline is broken by the deep inlet of Deep Cove. Surrounded by deep cliffs, this sheltered area once might have been an ideal place for a settlement, offering protection from both weather and unwanted eyes. Someone else want to have a turn? We're up to the western swamps. Anybody? Everybody's still awake? Um, yeah, yeah. Do, oh, do you want me to go? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Go. Not, not Pete. Oh, anybody. Uh, so the western swamps and reefs. Further to the west lies a small swamp island, a place of marshy ground, stagnant water, and croaking amphibians. Here, here is thick with moisture and a haze of swamp, rending at a ghostly appearance. Down south, the coastline becomes treacherous with shoal, the shoals. A collection of underwater reefs and rocky protrusions that may have been the doom suspecting ships. Uh, ask all like all this. Ship person, uh, port person, I should say. Um, big head in the southern islands. The southernmost point of Jewel Island is marked by the opposing big head hill up old rocky outcrop that seems to stand guard over the land. From this vantage one can spot three rocky islands south cape to the southeast. These barren islands, constantly battered by waves, are home only to nesting birds and occasional seal. The treacherous harbour also to the southeast, deceptive haven. Its waters, waters are calm but has hidden rocks. Low hills in the northern features, moving to the northern the eastern part of Jewel Island. Small jewel rises from the waters. Tiny rocky outcrop that's almost an afterthought. Close by, the land rises to form Rose Hill, a bleak, windswept mound that offers panoramic, albeit gloomy, views of the surrounding sea. Rocky Island further north is nothing more than a pile of jagged rock. Uh, a menace to any ship that dares come too close. Though Jewel Island is far from inviting, it bears the marks of some human endeavour. The remains of old settlements near Safe Harbour and Deep Cove are a testament to mankind's resilience, perhaps 
desperation. Excellent. Thank you. And down below, you'll see uh, three pages of maps. Uh, the Sea of Katana. A close up the Sea of Katana, where Jewel Island is. And then lastly, the last map, Jewel Island itself. And uh, for any viewers and listeners, uh, GM will also pop a um, copy of that document into the notes uh, or the description of this video if anybody would like to see learn or read what the, the team has just read out. See the image. That's what happens. Your characters witness this, frankly, pretty horrific scene. There's the occasional drip of blood from this man's rendered rent neck. Um, and other than that, there's the sound of the braziers. What do you do? And what thoughts do you have? I reckon we bugger off and chat about it later. Yeah. Alright. Yes. We'll, leave. Kings, we'll, leave. well, we commit commit it to memory, and we were asked to leave that behind, so we'll leave it behind and take the the stick of waving. <laughs> Do we want to write any notes? Nicholas has, got a, Nicholas has got a quill and ink in his, in his belt pouch. We could uh, make some comments. A, a little bit, sorry, a little bit uh, incorrect from the GM. I forgot about the, the stick of waving that was requested. Until you actually agree to the task, the stick of waving remains here too. Yeah. All right, we won't wave our sticks. Then we'll get out of here. What do okay. you reckon? Sounds good. Should we do the last rites for that poor man? I reckon we just get the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> <laughs> At least Askel didn't run up and kill him. <laughs> he wanted to. He wanted, he wanted to. to. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been good. Imagine the shock. All right. All right. Yeah, will make a comment like about people. Hmm. Say again. Seems like very interesting, very interesting rituals they have. <laughs> Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you. We've had a lovely time. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> really must be off. <laughs> wait, wait till we have to reciprocate. Oh, yeah, yeah. What will we do? Um, Ian Storms. So yeah, exactly. you repeat. You re unless anybody else, please correct me otherwise. Leaving the items there. Um, perhaps part of your own sanity as well from what you've just witnessed uh you beat the same retreat that you came in by and it's just simply a repeat of what happens you um you head over to to the door uh there is a a pause I just want to do this really yep there is the sound of a very large door opening your blindfolds are checked and you go through exactly the same procedure by the sounds of it the same man as well the same voice very calm very reassuring very bland very gray leading you back exactly the same the same path that you trod previously uh up 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 into finally what you would term um what feels like above above ground and then uh kind of out and the sounds of the city begin to envelop you again. The reassuring sounds of the city and the sounds of that terrible place, the braziers, etc. Wait. You're taken back to your accommodation. Uh, you've been away maybe t probably two to three hours. So now it's all told it's probably about 10.30 going on for 11 o'clock. You head back to your rooms where you started out. Anything you say or do? Well, I think maybe we're in the, when we're on the outside. Yes. Before we get into the room, maybe have a bit of a huddle. Yeah. What the fuck yeah. do you make of that? Um... <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, so Severin's thinking, I think about becoming a communist. Anyone in? <laughs> um, we haven't got the waving stick, have we? No, no. you haven't. No. no. Don't, don't wave the waving stick at us. Then. Trying to make us forget that other thing we just saw accidentally. <laughs> what other thing that you saw? Uh, mm -hmm. I've forgotten. <laughs> uh, 
Severin says to the party, is our any enemy's enemy our friend? Is this is this something we need to do to 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 see what we need to see through? It feels like an unholy alliance, but what, you know. What... Oh, yep. Glad you said yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. I think yep. We probably need to do this, but it doesn't sit right with me. Well, I don't think it sits right with anyone. Puff Pascal. I don't think it's just. Right. <laughs> <laughs> don't think it, <laughs> we don't know that. Uh, we don't know. Only, no, you don't know. You don't know. We don't know. Well, actually, Tanya does know. But um, uh, yeah. I mean, phew, I mean, it, How about I wouldn't blame, I wouldn't blame any. I wouldn't blame anyone if they wanted to turn their back on this endeavor. Now, what do you all think? No, let's do it. But after we've saved the world, they're the first ones we're going to kill, okay? <laughs> 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 they're on the list. So, so <laughs> Askel, Askel would uh, probably pace the room and then... Um, I think he, he, he would talk to us like, we need to think very carefully uh, about this. Um, and he will... To quotation from experience, quotation marks. Um, <laughs> so I have heard. <laughs> yes. Um, he he would probably discourage us as a group to do this. Of you 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 probably don't know the people you're getting into bed with, and it's probably not a good idea. It may be another way to. To achieve our Edens, <clears throat> you don't want to be this word, damned for the rest of eternity to reaffirmation. That's an interesting comment. Yeah, is reaffirmation a personal experience of yours? <laughs> Something he <laughs> knows that we're mm. going to. Right, we were talking about personal experience. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, I'm all ears. I'm, yep. Like, tell tell me more. And who's this guy, Archie Pagala Pelago? That's what I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas will point out his puzzlement with these people. It's probably just rich people thinking, but they've got far more to lose when the when the older order is dissolved than we do. Why do we have to prove ourselves to them? Well, that... that puzzling that, to me. Yeah, but, very, very puzzling. They seem very... I mean, thinking. <laughs> they're a funny bunch. Hmm. I felt that way about the leader of the Solar Council. Like, we're doing her a favour, aren't we? But anyway. Yeah, I think, yeah. yeah. Um, and of course, it's yeah. fine to do, to do the mission, but we'll be guided by the rest of the party. But I, I don't have a feeling that it's to do with... Um, it's perhaps a destiny thing. They yes. find out that we're actually broke, and these are just our best foes. You're gonna kill us? Kill us? I don't think they why they kill us. Really, not really worth it. Because we're poor. <laughs> no. Well, we're not that like, poor, actually. Um, they, help, they help poor people sometimes. My dirty secret. We've we've, we've got some cash. I mean, we're not hard up. Not right. And we've we, we got some very nice clothes. We do. Mm. So, so As Askel wants to talk to the group and, and says, and will basically say, the book that they spoke of, the subhuman in their place, he said, I'll be open and frank. My mistress wrote that book. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> um, and he'll look at Tanya and says, she knows I'm here, we are here, um, and, and so like Tanya knows uh, I've uh, had a, sort of a confrontation with one of my mistress's um, disciples, so to speak, uh, a worm, but still dangerous 
um, you, you do, yeah, to, to not underestimate the uh, brevity of this decision if we go down this path. No, well said. Um, what what uh, what other path is open to us? So there's all these weapons. Well, we're quite good if we could have those, eh? Because I mean, we're both mm -hmm. fighting the same enemy, but they just do it in a horrible way by like killing. Like they want to kill poor people. Why don't we just sneak off to this island and take the weapons for ourselves? With the ship we don't have. Yeah. All the gold we've just been. Fly, Esco, fly. <laughs> Well, I think the, the essential, the problem is, right, we've got every major spy agency on the known world wanted to bump us off or torture us to find out what they know. We've got the Tarang People's Party, they want to kill us and torture us for what we know. We're a bit short on allies. I mean, even tactically. Um, like, we don't really, we don't have many. Um... So, yes, I don't think we want to get into bed with these people. Mm. But these people will take us to where we need to get to if we intend to complete this mission. And given we've got to get from... to these islands, God to God knows where to then intercept Pipalis, to down to some frozen wasteland across a continent, uh, how are we going to do that? with all the spy agencies of the world after us so we can we, we fear to even use navigator columns and with though with a you know between two or three hundred gp each all gonna... i know is that after we've read all that out there's no way chris is not sending us there exactly and also <laughs> and also the unseen the, un, the unseen eye in the sky has spent a lot of time writing that document <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, hmm. And also, and we're going to his house, and he might serve us Cheerios or something when we get there. So, <laughs> I'm done. Don't, so, I mean, don't push you know. it. Don't push it. <laughs> I think I think so, I think yeah. you make a very good point about the them. I don't. We don't want to tie ourselves to them, but I think that we also gave them a message by not murdering that old man that we're not going to go down their way. We're not going to yeah. be doing their affirmation stuff. I th and I think that we, I personally, or Nicholas personally, would feel that, yeah, if there's ever that choice again, where we commit ourselves to, some, to something, then we avoid it. Yeah. Do we, just you know, say, do we just we, say, look, we're, we're not going to kill any poor people because it's wasting our time, our precious time? Do we just make some general excuse of why we yeah. never do it? Oh, bit yeah. busy. But the, the, washing yeah, my hair that day yeah, yeah. like touching them they're dirty yeah. <laughs> no, uh, what, uh, what do you think that's a, a plot you know i think that we well, i think we did send a message they were quite clear what we had what they expected of us and we unanimously would say no oh you were wavering the gm was fascinated with how you behaved but some of you were wavering but you did say no but you said no yeah so what does Askel th make of that, his, with his knowledge of this group, does he feel comfortable that that's enough for, to send a message? Because I do, I do think we're gonna, we ought to go on this mission. But, um... Yeah, um, Askel is concerned, and, he, and he'll talk to it the, this way of, once they get into your head, almost literally, um, I don't know how you get them out of your head or what they want you to do. It's one of the who's you've signed up to the mafia. Mm. Well, let's not sign a up to the mafia. Askel, yeah, Askel has concerns of, you know, he's just, he'll be visibly, mm, <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, sure. a, Should we double, double cross them? They were doing it, but we. But we aren't. But, but or what they, do we do it? These are extremely wealthy groups and people. Um, who knows if they've been watching us like they have been of me since we got out I had arrived. Maybe so. And maybe it's them who keep the intelligence agency in the bay who want to, you know, we are wanted by so many people already. Um, yeah. If if we don't take up this task, what do we do? 
I mean, we turn our back on the whole venture. The world ends. Uh, you know. And you make think, it a horse. I think, so, I think this is our best <laughs> as, a, as a party, I think this is where we're supposed to, yeah. to go there, personally. Um, uh, Nicholas will also point out, do we want to know where this place is? Because he can always uh, cast the whispering spell. <laughs> Watch for its eyes. <laughs> Yeah, and there is all the weapons on there. We might need all these weapons. Yeah, why don't you do that? That would be interesting. Well, I'd, he's looking to Askel's opinion. Is it is it worth risking us finding out where they are? Or are you going to send them whispering all the way to the island and back? No, 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 no. Tomorrow, oh, damn, I thought there was... If we, go, if, there. if we go tomorrow night back to their, to their place, yeah, if they invite us over for tea or something, um, when we are blindfolded, Nicholas can have the whispering following. And oh, so he clever, can, very clever. Well, well, but, well, what does Askel think, though? Is it worth the risk? Will they be guarding against that? Because Nicholas thinks they will. Mm. <laughs> That's what I'm assuming man can probably detect magic and will probably stop us and say, oi, oi, oi. What's Askel's opinion? Mm. Uh, yeah. They're not, well, yeah, they're not stupid and they're not without magic as, as they talk to. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> they, they, they do magic too. No. Can, can can you negotiate with the Maskell since um, since you're the closest to this group mm. and just sort of say sort of give terms like well I'm happy to do certain things because I have to but the others won't. That's a good idea. I don't I don't think we even go there personally. I no. I just yeah. I think I prefer what Pete was saying as look. We'll do this. You know what we're about. We've told you why we're in this. Okay, stand strong. We we not we, we, we're not interested in murdering poor people as it goes. Um, but I'll just we, keep fixing them anyway. So speak pointless. Exactly. You can, <laughs> well, I mean, sorry, uh, I'm not speaking for everyone, uh, but you know, most of us <laughs> don't like murdering poor people for no good reason. Mm. Um, but it gets us Cheerios though. Well, exactly. I mean, that, that was the case. To make consideration. Hundred really. XP point for that comment. <laughs> um, I think, uh, yeah, ask, ask all well, 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 I think let's run through some more cereals. If this is with uh, <laughs> special K. So, so we've all decided we need to find out what food they were going to offer us. <laughs> cereal multi pack. We need to see um, the menu. <laughs> so, Eskel would say to Jada about the trying to influence this group and mm. his response would be I'm not on the same pay band they're not going to listen to me or us yeah. why aren't they doing it themselves they're busy, yeah. they're busy. Why, why are they sending us are we the patsies I think, and I think that's the other yeah, I think it's a really good point because their, their terminology so I think they gave us an opportunity to join with them tonight by murdering that man to show that our that we're on board with their beliefs, we told them no. So now we are proving that they're worthy of their help, not to join their group. I don't think they want us in their group. You know, we we I think we're serving their purpose by going up against these people by trying to stop Torvash Papillus, all of that stuff. We're actually doing what they want anyway. We just have shown them that we're not interested in being part of their group, part of their team. But they'll still want to aid us, and I don't, you know. So we can't kill them and go get these weapons for ourselves. I think we would. I think they'll be really well protected. So, I personally, <sighs> Nicholas yeah, I personally would 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 value Askel's opinion, but still feel that this is a mission that we should do, but not meaning to go against what he's advising. But you know, for various reasons, feels that's what we should be doing. Hmm. Okay, yes. Uh, Askel's take would would be we're going to do this then yeah be, be prepared for the, the outcomes um, um, and we prepared to stab them in the back oh yeah oh mm. don't trust them don't mm. trust them no yeah. way And where we can, yeah, use all our wits and leave as little trace of, us, of ourselves as possible. Yeah. 
fascinating discussion. <laughs> and he, um, so you come home late. You've had this conversation outside in the courtyard, so you can't be overheard. Any further comments, any further discussion that you have this evening? No, well, um, no. Uh, well, I would. One thing I would say is, uh, I did think if this was the other party, uh, things might be quite. I'd I think we, if we do bump into the hero party in the near future, possibly say, maybe don't hang out with the mod men. But anyway. Mm. All right. Um, you come back insides into um, uh, into the Grand Bazaar Lodge uh, cheery nice warm place full of people that are laughing and smiling and not cutting each other's throats um, it feels like coming home it's nice to be back and after what you've just witnessed and the conversations and frankly utter underlying menace of that experience it's nice to be back inside in familiar surroundings you head to bed that evening some of you have some most of you have some pretty unsettling dreams and that is where we're going to leave it for this evening hope you enjoyed it Oh. <laughs> it's very good. It was oh. very good. Sort of confronting. I miss mm. Bostrod. Bostrod, he would have sorted all this out. <laughs> Bostrod was very straightforward. <laughs> I'm, I'm still only halfway through listening to that. I'm still, I still want to, to finish that. It sounded so cool. But, uh, <laughs> exorcist, the Exorcist. Oh yeah, five and a half hour epic. <laughs> <laughs> just, I just love hearing your your comments. You just both are just <laughs> so it's just so cool. <laughs> just yeah, the wonderings about the situation and then the oh yeah okay. Love it. <laughs> um, welcome back, Aiden. Nice to have you. Thanks. <laughs> welcome <laughs> back, Aiden. <laughs> <laughs> I started to fade, fade it a little bit. At the end.